come on in. I'm just going to do your weigh-in. Okay. Okay. Gunther Hertz has been battling mental illness, including bipolar disorder, for more than two decades. Therapy, antidepressants, and antipsychotic drugs brought him back from incredibly dark places. But many of them had side effects, including weight gain. Okay, so 363.4. He says doctors brushed off his weight concerns, leading Hertz to quietly risk his mental stability. I would go off the medication just because I felt if I went off, I could go back for my weight and my and how I looked at myself. Experts say 25% of psychiatric patients gain weight on their medications. Studies suggest antidepressants can lead to an average weight gain of one to three pounds per month of treatment. And yet it's not really something that's taken as seriously as you know, I feel and I know patients feel it should be. Leading experts say patients need coordinated care. People with mental illness die up to 15 years earlier than those without psychiatric issues. And it has less to do with suicide and more to do with heart disease and diabetes, which are impacted by weight gain. It's almost as if patients have to choose between which chronic illness that they're prepared to accept. And I think that that's a really difficult situation to put patients in. Doctors may not talk about weight because there are no easy answers, but experts insist just having the conversation can help patients mentally prepare for the changes ahead. Making them aware of the, what's the evidence in terms of best treatments available, what are the risks in terms of weight gain, and, uh, and having them uh, also consider other side effects as well, and then having an informed choice about what might match for them. The calories are within good range. I see that you've made some positive changes. With help from a dietitian and counselor, Hertz has lost 30 pounds, 100 still to go, and he's not taking any more risks. The weight's secondary, but the meds, I need them. I need to have them. Mentally ready for the next fight of his life. Christine Barak, CBC News, St. Catharines, Ontario. Type in in Vegas, Sustana. Go to the second name in parentheses, paraparamone, palomarin, type it in, it comes out, paraparamone, go to Wicca, and you can read what it says, all the different names, now go to R-HT2A receptor, you can click the blue, and I'll go to that page. Explaining how it's a chemical lobotomy and destroys the human body. And it's reproduction systems called testosterone and in the brain. The next video will explain how it is. The mammalian 5-HT2A receptor is a subtype of the 5-HT2 receptor that belongs to the serotonin receptor family and is a G-protein coupled receptor. This is the main excitatory receptor subtype among the GPCRs for serotonin, although 5-HT2A may also have an inhibitory effect on certain areas such as the visual cortex and the orbitofrontal cortex. This receptor was first given importance as a target of serotonergic psychedelic drugs such as LSD. Later it came back to prominence because it was also found to be mediating, at least partly, the action of many antipsychotic drugs, especially the atypical ones. 5-HT2A may be a necessary receptor for the spread of the human polymer virus called JC virus. Dowangulation of postsynaptic 5-HT2A receptor is an adaptive process provoked by chronic administration of selective serotonin reuptake inhibitors and classical antipsychotics. Deceased suicidal and otherwise depressed patients have had more 5-HT2A receptors than normal patients. These findings suggest that postsynaptic 5-HT2A overdensity is involved in the pathogenesis of depression. History Serotonin receptors were split into two classes by Gadam and Piccarelli when it was discovered that some of the serotonin-induced changes in the gut could be blocked by morphine, whilst the remainder of the response was inhibited by dibenzyline leading to the naming of M and E receptors respectively. 5-HT2A is thought to correspond to what was originally described as D subtype of 5-HT receptors by Gadam and Piccarelli. In the pre-molecular cloning era when radiolagant binding and displacement was the only major tool, spiperone and LSD were shown to label two different serotonin receptors, 
and neither of them displaced morphine, leading to naming of the 5-HT1, 5-HT2 and 5-HT3 receptors, corresponding to high affinity sites from LSD, spiperone and morphine respectively. Later it was shown that the 5-HT2 was very close to 5-HT1C and thus were clubbed together, renaming the 5-HT2 into 5-HT2A. Thus the 5-HT2 receptor family is composed of three separate molecular entities, the 5-HT2A, the 5-HT2B and the 5-HT2C receptors. Distribution 5-HT2A is expressed widely throughout the central nervous system. It is expressed near most of the serotoninergic terminal rich areas, including neocortex and the olfactory tubercle. Especially high concentrations of this receptor on the apical dendrites of pyramidal cells in layer V of the cortex may modulate cognitive processes, working memory, and attention by enhancing glutamate release followed by a complex range of interactions with the 5-HT1A, GABAA, adenosine A1, AMPA, MGLUR2-3, MGLU5, and OX2 receptors. In the rat cerebellum, the protein has also been found in the Golgi cells of the granular layer, and in the Purkinje cells. In the periphery, it is highly expressed in platelets and many cell types of the cardiovascular system, in fibroblasts, and in neurons of the peripheral nervous system. Additionally, 5-HT2A mRNA expression has been observed in human monocytes. Signaling cascade, the 5-HT2A receptor is known primarily to couple to the GI plus or minus Q signal transduction pathway. Upon receptor stimulation with agonist, GI plus or minus Q and I squared I cubed subunits dissociate to initiate downstream effector pathways. GI plus or minus Q stimulates phospholipase C activity which subsequently promotes the release of diacylglycerol and inositol trophosphate, which in turn stimulate protein kinase C activity and CAR2 plus release. There are many additional signal cascade components that include the formation of arachidonic acid through PLA2 activity, activation of phospholipase D, RORO kinase, and ERK pathway activation initiated by agonist stimulation of the receptor. Effects Physiological processes mediated by the receptor include, CNS neuronal excitation, behavioral effects, learning, anxiety, smooth muscle, contraction, vasoconstriction slash vasodilation, platelets, aggregation, activation of the 5-HT2A receptor with DOI produces potent anti-inflammatory effects in several tissues including cardiovascular and gut. Other 5-HT2A agonists like LSD also have potent anti-inflammatory effects against TNF-alpha induced inflammation. Activation of the 5-HT2A receptor in hypothalamus causes increases in hormonal levels of excitocin, prolactin, ACTH, corticosterone, and renin. Role in memory. Ligands. Equals agonists equals. Activation of the 5-HT2A receptor is necessary for the effects of the classic psychedelics like LSD, psilocin and mescaline, which act as full or partial agonists at this receptor, and represent the three main classes of 5-HT2A agonists, the agolins, tryptamines and phenethylamines, respectively. A very large family of derivatives from these three classes has been developed, and their structure-activity relationships have been extensively researched. Agonists acting at 5-HT2A receptors located on the apical dendrites of pyramidal cells within regions of the frontal cortex are believed to mediate hallucinogenic activity. Newer findings reveal that psychoactive effects of classic psychedelics are mediated by the receptor heterodimer 5-HT2 or Euro-MGLU2 and not by monomeric 5-HT2A receptors. Agonists enhance dopamine and PFC enhances memory and plays a role in attention and learning. Full agonists, 25-INBOH and its 2-methoxy analog 25-INBOME, R, DOI, TCB2, Bromo Dragonfly, Mexamin is a full agonist to several serotonin receptors. O4310, 5-HT2A selective, claimed to have 100x selectivity over 5-HT2C and be inactive at 5-HT2B, PHA57378, dual 5-HT2A-5-HT2C agonist, 
Anxiolytic effects in animal studies. Partial agonists, 25 CNBOME, methicigid, a congener of methylergonobin, used in treatment of migraine blocks 5-HT2A and 5-HT2C receptors, but sometimes acts as partial agonist, in some preparations. OSU6162 acts as a partial agonist at both 5-HT2A and dopamine D2 receptors, 25 CNNBOH, 100x selectivity for 5-HT2A over 5-HT2C, 46x selectivity over 5-HT2B. Junkosam, is a structurally constrained derivative of 25 BNBOME, which acts as a potent partial agonist with 124x selectivity for 5-HT2A over 5-HT2C, making it the most selective agonist ligand identified to date. Cannabidiol, a phytocannabinoid in cannabis. Efavirenz, an antiretroviral drug, produces psychiatric side effects thought to be mediated by 5-HT2A. Meflokine, an antimalarial drug, also produces psychiatric side effects which may be mediated through 5-HT2A and or 5-HT2C receptors. Lysuride, an anti-Parkinson dopamine agonist of the agolin class, that is also a dual 5-HT2A slash 5-HT2C agonist and 5-HT2B antagonist. Peripherally selective agonists, one effect of 5-HT2A receptor activation is a reduction in intraocular pressure and so 5-HT2A agonists can be useful for the treatment of glaucoma. This has led to the development of compounds such as AL34662 that are hoped to reduce pressure inside the eyes but without crossing the blood or euro brain barrier and producing hallucinogenic side effects. Animal studies with this compound showed it to be free of hallucinogenic effects at doses up to 30 mg per kilogram although several of its more liopapillic analogues did produce the head twitch response known to be characteristic of hallucinogenic effects in rodents. Equals silent antagonists equals, trazodone is a potent 5-HT2A antagonist, as well as an antagonist on other serotonin receptors. Although ergot alkaloids are mostly non-specific 5-HT receptor antagonists, a few ergot derivatives such as metagolin bind preferentially to members of the 5-HT2 receptor family. The discovery of ketanserin was a landmark in the pharmacology of 5-HT2 receptors. Ketanserin, though capable of blocking 5-HT-induced platelet adhesion, however does not mediate its well-known antihypertensive action through 5-HT2 receptor family, but through its high affinity for alpha-1 adrenergic receptors. It also has high affinity for H1 histaminergic receptors equal to that at 5-HT2A receptors. Compounds chemically related to ketanserin such as retanserin are more selective 5-HT2A receptor antagonists with low affinity for alpha-adrenergic receptors. However, retanserin, like most other 5-HT2A receptor antagonists, also potently inhibits 5-HT2C receptors. Nephazodone operates by blocking postsynaptic serotonin type 2A receptors and to a lesser extent by inhibiting presynaptic serotonin and norepinephrine reuptake. Atypical antipsychotic drugs like clozapine, olanzapine, quetiapine, risperidone and acinapine are relatively potent antagonists of 5-HT2A as are some of the lower potency old generation typical antipsychotics. Other antagonists are MDL-100907 and ciproheptadine. Pisotyphon is a non-selective antagonist. Li-367265, dual 5-HT2A antagonist slash SSRI with antidepressant effects, 2 orcal 4 aryl tetrahydropyrimidoazpines are subtype selective antagonists. AMDA and related derivatives are another family of selective 5-HT2A antagonists. Hydroxyzin, 5-MeO-NBPBAT. Equals inverse agonists equals, AC90179, potent and selective inverse agonist at 5-HT2A, also 5-HT2C antagonist. Nelatanserin, Selective 5-HT2A inverse agonist developed by Arena Pharmaceuticals for the treatment of insomnia. APD-125 was shown to be effective and well tolerated in clinical trials. Aplivanserin, a sleeping pill that reached Phase 2 trials, 
acts as a selective 5-HT2A inverse agonist. Pimabanserin, more selective than AC90179, orally active, antipsychotic in vivo, now in human clinical trials. Volanansarin equals functional selectivity equals 5-HT2A receptor ligands may differentially activate the transductional pathways. Studies evaluated the activation of two effectors, PLC and PLA2, by means of their second messengers. Compounds displaying more pronounced functional selectivity are 2, 5-DMA and 2-CN. The former induces IP accumulation without activating the PLA2-mediated response while the latter elicits AA release without activating the PLC-mediated response. Recent research has suggested potential signaling differences within the somatosensory cortex between 5-HT2A agonists that produce headshakes in the mouse and those that do not, such as lysuride, as these agents are also non-hallucinogenic in humans despite being active 5-HT2A agonists. One known example of differences in signal transduction is between the two 5-HT2A agonists serotonin and DLOI that involves differential recruitment of intracellular proteins called I-squared arescens, more specifically arrest in beta-2. Equals role of lyopopilicity equals, a set of ligands were evaluated. For agonists, a highly significant linear correlation was observed between binding affinity and lyopopilicity. For ligands exhibiting partial agonist or antagonist properties, the lyopopilicity was consistently higher than would be expected for an agonist of comparable affinity. Genetics The 5-HT2A receptors is coded by the HTA2A gene. In humans the gene is located on chromosome 13. The gene has previously been called just HTA2 until the description of two related genes HTA2B and HTA2C. Several interesting polymorphisms have been identified for HTA2A, A1438G, C102T and his 452T. Many more polymorphisms exist for the gene. A 2006 paper listed 255. Equals associations with psychiatric disorders equals, several studies have seen links between the minus 1438 grams per up polymorphism and mood disorders such as bipolar disorder and major depressive disorder. A weak link with an odds ratio of 1.3 has been found between the T102C polymorphism and schizophrenia. This polymorphism has also been studied in relation to suicide attempts, with a study finding excess of the CC genotypes among the suicide attempters. A number of other studies were devoted to finding an association of the gene with schizophrenia, with diverging results. These individual studies may, however, not give a full picture. A review from 2007 looking at the effect of different SNPs reported in separate studies stated that genetic association studies of HTA2A gene variants with psychiatric disorders report conflicting and generally negative results with no involvement, small or a not replicated role for the genetic variant of the gene. Treatment response one study has found that genetic variations between individuals in the HTA2A gene may to some extent account for the difference in outcome of antidepressant treatment, so that patients suffering from major depressive disorder and treated with citalopram may benefit more than others if they have one particular genotype. In this study 768 single nucleotide polymorphism across 68 genes were investigated and a SNPA euro termed RS799701 to a euro in the second intron of the HTA2A gene showed significant association with treatment outcome. Genetics seems also to be associated to some extent with the amount of adverse events in treatment of major depression disorder. One study has also linked abnormal 5-HT2A polymorphisms which may enhance receptor activity with chronic fatigue syndrome. Neuroimaging, the 5-HT2A receptors may be imaged with PET scanners using the fluorine 18 altan serin and 100907 moldovan lyridioligans that binds to the neuroreceptor, for example, one study reported a reduced binding of altanserin particularly in the hippocampus in patients with major depressive disorder. Another PET study reported increased altanserin binding in the caudate nuclei in obsessive-compulsive disorder patients compared to a healthy control group. 
Patients with Tourette's syndrome have also been scanned and the study found an increased binding of altanserin for patients compared to healthy controls. The altanserin uptake decreases with age reflecting a loss of specific 5-HT2A receptors with age. A study has also found a positive correlation among healthy subjects between altanserin binding and the personality trait neuroticism as measured by the NEOPIA personality questionnaire. Role in virus endocytosis, 5-HT2A may be a necessary receptor for clathrin-mediated endocytosis of the human polymer virus called JC virus, the causative agent of progressive multifocal leukoencephalopathy, that enters cells such as oligodendrocytes, astrocytes, B lymphocytes, and kidney epithelial cells. These cells need to express both the alpha 2-6 a euro linked sialic acid component of the 5-HT2A receptor in order to endocytis JCV. References Further reading, Perez Aguilar J. M., Sham J., Levine M. V., Kalashvili G., Weinstein H. A functional selectivity mechanism at the serotonin 2 AGPCR involves ligand-dependent conformations of intracellular loop 2 inches. J. M. Chem. Soc 136, 16044 a Euro 16054. DOI, 10.1021-January 508394X. PMID 25314362. External links, 5-HT2A IUPHAR Database of Receptors and Ion Channels International Union of Basic and Clinical Pharmacology 5-HT2A Receptor at the U.S. National Library of Medicine Medical Subject Headings Testosterone Production The hypothalamus releases gonadotropin-releasing hormone, or GnRH, in pulses every 60 to 90 minutes to stimulate the pulsatile release of luteinizing hormone, LH, from the pituitary gland into the bloodstream. LH binds the LH receptor on the Leydig cells of the testes. Binding initiates a cascade of events, which include the conversion of cholesterol, depicted as LDL here, to pregnenolone, followed by a series of reactions, which convert pregnenolone to testosterone. Testosterone, secreted by the testes, diffuses into the peripheral circulation to be carried to target tissues. In liver, muscle, and adipose tissue, testosterone binds directly to its androgen receptor, or AR, to exert its biological effect. In skin, hair, the prostate gland, and gonadal tissue, testosterone must be converted to dihydrotestosterone, or DHT, by 5-alpha reductase in order to bind the androgen receptor. In bone and brain, testosterone is converted by aromatization to estradiol, or E2, which binds the estrogen receptor, E2R, to carry out its effects. Your doctor may recommend testosterone replacement therapy if the level of testosterone in your bloodstream is significantly lower than normal. Testosterone is a male hormone, also called an androgen, which is produced in your testicles. Testosterone promotes the development of male sexual characteristics and supports masculine functions, such as sperm production and sexual desire. This hormone is also essential for maintaining bone density, red blood cell level, muscle mass, and a sense of well-being. Low levels of testosterone in your blood may result in a condition called androgen deficiency or hypogonadism, which may include increased body fat, reduced muscle size, and swollen breasts. If your testosterone level is low, you may experience reduced sex drive, erectile dysfunction, and low sperm count leading to infertility.
A deficiency in testosterone affects all parts of your body and may also cause loss of body hair, increased body fat, decreased muscle mass, diminished bone density, which can lead to osteoporosis, mild anemia, swollen or tender breasts, hot flashes, decreased energy, and depression. Testosterone replacement therapy is the administration of man-made testosterone to raise the level of this hormone in your blood back to normal and to relieve your symptoms. You can take testosterone therapy via an injection, patch, gel, or tablet. If you have injections, you will receive one every two to three weeks. The testosterone will be delivered into the muscle of your buttocks. If you use a testosterone skin patch, you will place a patch on your arm, back, abdomen, or upper buttocks. You will change the patch daily. If you use testosterone gel, you will apply it daily to the skin on your shoulder, upper arm, or abdomen. If you use buckle tablets, you will place one tablet on your gum line twice a day. In men, symptoms of low testosterone are the following. Not just not waking up in the morning with an erection. Not just having poor quality erections. Not being able to sustain an erection long enough or not having a strong enough erection to satisfy yourself or your partner. It also means not being able to build muscle. When you go to the gym and the guy next to you is 25 years old and hopefully not taking any big testosterone or growth hormone, and he's building a lot of muscle and you're not, well, that's low testosterone. You also need muscles and strength in order to protect your bones. Testosterone helps build muscle and support bones. Finally, let's look at depression, mood swings. The fact that as we get older, we watch our men in general become depressed, become couch potatoes, sit there sipping on the beer and getting beer bellies, and less and less communicative. Not that we thought men were very communicative, communicative to begin with, but as they get older, they become less communicative. That's testosterone as well. Testosterone is not just about having a men's voice or growing hair, or for that matter, losing hair as you get older. Testosterone is a hormone of well-being. Study after study has demonstrated that taking testosterone improves well-being, improves cardiac function, and it also is really important in quality of life, preventing frailty as we get older. There's no reason not to take testosterone. Too many calories and a drop in metabolic rate can be a lethal combination. Fat is much more than an extra inch on our waistline. It spreads throughout the entire body. For the first time, a high-definition endoscope inserted through the navel reveals the full extent of fat cover inside the abdomen. The intestines are smothered in yellow fat deposits. Fat finds its way into almost every available space of our bodies, even inside our blood vessels. Deposits build up on the inner walls, narrowing the tube. The heart has to work harder to pump blood through the restricted vessels. In extreme cases, fat can block the vessels completely. If fat blocks the arteries that supply the heart, the result can be fatal. The heart muscles are deprived of oxygen and nutrients. The muscle risks going into spasm, a heart attack.
Heart disease is the biggest killer in the Western world. Gynomascus, 70% of young men have it in adolescence, meaning a sex change drug could be in the body. Antitestosterone, harming the human body so it can't hit puberty. Cause and effect of low testosterone as well, and the brain being turned off, like the videos before said. Millions of dollars spent on human controlled substances called hormone replacements and therapies so you could live an active, free life by human rights standard. The right to play, exercise, have a family, to live, HCG to be able to breed, or testosterone as well. A controlled substance being neglected to us as children and as adults. Determining who can breed and who can do what. Like handing an application for a job and never getting a job. They control it. We all want to work for the government and have 40 hours a week, two days off, and our standard two-week vacation. We'd like a four-week vacation, but we can't get that done yet. And we'd like to work four days a week as well. And we would also like our CPP up to our maximum RSP. We want $26,000 put away for every year for our retirement as we work. Not the minimum standard. We don't need our RSPs, do we? Another psychological harm to physical harm because it's all our body. Our mind and our body are all one. Violations of human rights, laws and ethics by psychiatry drugs, doctors, and government agencies knowing the effect, effect that it does to us all. A lethal injection. And the police department knowing the harm that it causes human beings around the world or in Canada or North America. By association, guilty.